15 points. He can't go up or down on the track, so he rams the you-know-what of Herman Smith. Herman goes flying, and he's out of there for the night. Thanks a lot, Mike. With a great crowd of 11 foul plus on hand, Alexander had the lead on Rusty Wallace in the late going. Rusty tries to pass down low. Forget it. He wavers. He tags Alexander. They both go into the rail. This with only five laps to go. After the yellow flag, Joe Rutman, number four, found himself on the pole and coming up on turn two. Alexander is about to blow a right rear tire. Look at this. He hits the wall. He gets nailed by Bobby Allison. He rolls over. Only shaken up on the accident was Alexander somehow. A closer look at, uh, I guess they call it a Firebird. Wallace went on to overtake Rutman, no problem, and win the Folgers 200, a great night of action. Let's take one more look at the crash. Watch how Allison in 22 lifts him up right there. A cut on his nose was all that Mike suffered, thank God. He was planning on racing up in Indiana this afternoon. He didn't. I can't imagine why. Race when his car touched the wall and flipped over. The car then skidded over 200 feet on its top down the back stretch. But Alexander was not injured in the spectacular crash. He had led the race for a total of 65 laps before the accident. Following that crash, the race was resumed. And it was Rusty Wallace in car number 66 winning the Folgers 200. Wallace had a lead of about six car lengths over Joe Rutman. Bobby Allison finished third. The race attracted a crowd of almost 12,000 without NASCAR sanctions. It was, from the promoter's standpoint, a huge success.